Welcome back to Undying Winds. Uh, this is session number 11 uh, called Unpaid Debts. The uh, adventuring group, um, so far nameless um, in their company, uh, the, the servants of Lord Kurgosler, perhaps, who knows what they shall be called. Uh, definitely um, the... Uh, will be called the idealists. Fair enough. Um, they have exited out of the pyramid um, and uh, it apparently has either destroyed itself or has gone away. Um, they escaped from it, um, it breaking apart beneath the um, conglomerate establishments um, that were built over top of it. Um, they've all gone to do their own things for a short time. Um, Broskar went to go and get himself a drink, ended up going all the way to Red Wheel to get it, um, where he spoke to some of the members of uh, Balin's Watch, uh, or one of the members of Balin's Watch basically uh, explained that um, uh, Sayer's soul is at rest. So a good quest arc for him, uh, completed, question mark. Um, Lord Kurgosler went home to go and deal with the uh, mess um, that would be presumably left after spending three or so days uh, in a dungeon uh, just upon the arrival of uh, his family from Stormloft. A quest completed for him uh, there as well. Uh, but he has learned that um, his uh, the, the, the actual uh, head of the house, Kurt Gosler, um, has basically taken up the um, position of Lord um, in his absence. Um, and should be returning back to the house at some point uh, today. Um, the uh, change uh, to Valette um, is very drastic. Um, as she kind of inspects uh, her equipment, uh, she realizes that the idealist mass doesn't appear to be present on her anymore, but she strangely has this sensation that she can still see um, as if she were wearing it. Um, that and other things she's slowly kind of, you know, uh, she, she realizes she um, she has uh, different changes about her undaunted frame, um, which are um, very strange in that she does seem to possess some of the qualities of a living creature. Uh, she effectively breathes, um, and uh, she also has eaten a sweet roll, which was tasty. Uh, um, Sam is just kind of in the mix, keeping back, um, holding himself quiet. Uh, not sure too much what his motivations are, but I'm sure we'll figure that out tonight. And of course, uh, Ren um, is uh, a bit perturbed um, and kind of uh, directionless. Uh, he went back to his uh, office and it was boarded up and signage stated that uh, it was sealed uh, on... Um, command of the conglomerate. Um, I don't remember specifically who it was. Oh yeah, Sam. Uh, handed over um, the phylactery, quote unquote, of the uh, strange undead Magier they found inside of the pyramid. Uh, they handed it over to um, the Magier Kurgosler, who upon accepting it, vanished. Um, yeah, they've all meandered back to House Kurgosler. Um, and as we covered last scene, um, or last session, uh, the uh, entourage um, consisting of um, Kale Kurgosler, the, uh, uh, I believe he's your uncle, right, uh, Kevin? Yes. Yeah, your uncle, um, returning back to um, House Kurgosler. Um, it's getting later in the day, uh, not terribly late, probably, you know, just before evening time. Um definitely before lunch would be prepared and you can see that a number of the uh, uh, younger folk of the Kerr Gosler house have started uh, have already taken over the kitchens for their own and are um, engaging in the preparation of a evening meal some are happy to see you uh, most are just you know um, kind of going about their business as if they've already kind of cemented themselves into this house and its operation um, Broxgar, upon entering the house uh, with Ren, um, and I believe Sam was at the bar as well, and Brock um, as well, um, Broxgar kind of heads off on his own back to the library, where you can kind of hear him, like, gruffly, Ugh, uh, as he kind of, like, brushes past um, 
uh, studious uh, Kirk Osler teenagers and young adults who are absorbing as much as they can from the library. Uh, Vrac, um, since you weren't here last session, I'll uh, just give you a quick synopsis of um, what happened if you haven't caught up. But uh, at the beginning of what appeared to be a very strange engagement, you felt your body taken over by the spirit and the sword. Um, you felt yourself empowered by it, um, and you fought bravely so. Um, afterwards, you kind of have had this weird state of kind of discombobulation. Um, but when Broxgar said he was going for a drink, that was something that kind of uh, beaconed you to being able to do that, knowing how to do that, and being very interested in doing that. I presume uh, if your character's a teetotaler, just hanging out with Broxgar was uh, the motivation then. Um, and uh, that's where you've been kind of staying. You've been kind of keeping yourself uh, kind of attached to Broxgar from that point. Um, that said, I, I open the table off to you. I'm hearing an echo. Mm -hmm, me too. I'm hearing an echo. Um, just out of curiosity, you said some of the kids are uh, reading the books in the library of Gilbert. So. If you recall, House Well and Bart, before it became House Kirk Gosler, had a substantial library. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm wondering if any of them have come over any of my edits. Roll a D100. I, I, I edited some of those books. I recall. The spirit that I sensed inhabit me, that wasn't Sayer, right? It was Sayer. It was Sayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. That's a 71 out of 100. <laughs> Okay. Uh, no, not so far. Uh, again, you only had time to manage a couple of books, um, notations, um, and so far it seems that their studies are kind of relegated to um, the more interesting books, where yours were the histories. And uh, Hey, boring. history is interesting! Not to a kid. I liked history when I was a kid. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, what if everyone, just again, the table is open, so just... Um, are we still at the bar, or no, did we actually go back? Yeah, you came back to House Kurgosler. Sam will continue to work on some of the books since he has some downtime. Okay. Brockgar <laughs> takes his position in the uh, the corner um, as he did um, last time he was in the library. Uh, the kids that are present kind of keep clear of uh, Brockgar. Um, giving him quite a wide berth, but some of them you can tell are interestedly kind of looking over at the uh, red Bane dwarf, kind of just curious. Um, not too many seem too terribly interested in you, um, except for one, a uh, really young lad, um, doubly small because he's a gnome, um, just kind of looking at you, uh, looking at your head. At my head? Your head, yeah. Right, so put down the book and just for a second just sort of look at him like what you looking at fucking bugger eh. scoot ah. kind of runs off and then go back to the book okay um what have you uh Brock is there more drink to be had in this house uh Sorry, would you like it in character, Gilbert? There more drink to be had in this house here, little blue brother. <laughs> well, assuming that my family didn't drink at all, I'll see if I can wrangle you up something. What would you like? Uh, uh, mighty ale? fine. Whatever you got on tap is good by me, little man. All right. Are you going into the uh, kitchen to recover uh, beverages yourself, or are you requesting someone else to do it for you? I'm happy no. to follow. Oh, sorry. Oh, it was mainly for Kevin. Yes, I will. I will ask one of the uh, like adolescent-aged gnomes to go and grab a bale, beer or ale or something. For oh, I don't think we have any um, beer or ale. There's some wine from downstairs, and um, we brought over um, some of the. Uh, well, we brought everything with us, so uh, we definitely have a lot of the fire water um, that we were um, uh, that we had that we have. Oh, I'm, well, I'd love probably... to try your foreign fire water if you don't mind, little man. 
okay, and kind of rushes off, comes back um, uh, after a fashion um, with a bottle, uh, kind of round and then flat at the bottom, a uh, tall neck, and the uh, contents are, the, the, the glass is pretty clear. Uh, the contents appear to be kind of a bluish colored liquid that seems to be kind of like wispy at the top. Like, uh, you know, when you look at uh, gasoline in um, uh, like a hot day, it kind of has that same look to it, but bluish in color. Um, sets that down um, at a very, very tiny little cup. And then starts to pour just a teeny little bit into it and uh, sets the bottle next to it. There you go. Stick around close, little man. I don't know how long this one bottle is going to last me. Right. You here? <laughs> oh, okay. And looks around and uh, sees a chair, because uh, you're uh, presumably in the dining room, um, and sits next to you. Care to join me, my uh, gracious new little host? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, I'm talking to Gilbert. Oh. <laughs> he goes, apologies. <laughs> kind of bows. You're welcome to some too, if you like, brother. Looks at Gilbert uh, as if he's asking permission. Oh, um, sure. I'll have a drink with you. And I'll take like a little shot. If Grab another shot glass if he has one. Take a little shot. That's yeah. four three. And hand take. one to the little guy. The little guy, um, he uh, takes a shot. Um, he uh, very immediately, uh, <coughs> 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 <laughs> it grows on you, trust me. Then you hear a female voice come from the kitchen. Baron! Runs out. Baron! What are you doing? I told you not to drink any of the resources. That's for the Glorns, and that's for the uncle. Ah! It brushes the boy out. <laughs> you guys oh, partake? Boy. Oh, yeah. Constitution saving throws. This is gonna take some good. I used. knew it. Twenty-five. Ooh, wow. Nice one. Eighteen. This is just like the stuff back home, Gilbert. Uh, it's definitely uh, the Kurt Gosler recipe of fire water. Uh, fire water is kind of a uh, a red gnome um, uh, tradition. Um, it uh, typically doesn't pass outside of uh, Red Gnome kind of culture, um, but the uh, House Kurt Gosler has kind of taken a shine to it um, in crafting it. Um, it has a certain kind of uh, burn, um, kind of like more of a cold burn than like a fiery burn uh, when you drink it down. But for the two of you, you guys aren't immediately repulsed by the beverage, but you do sense the quality of it. It's like, whew. Mm, refreshing. <laughs> well, to new friendships. And I would <laughs> toast them again. Hopefully they last longer than the last. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Try not to think of that. That's why we're drinking, to forget about that. Stuff. <laughs> <Ugh>. Amazing. <laughs> so, down another one. All right. So yeah, no, one yeah, more. no more constitution saving throws are required. Belette, you've been kind of quiet, um, and also Ren. Um, I'll go ahead and start with uh, Andy. What's uh, Ren doing now that um, he's kind of... Yep. Yeah, so Ren would probably um, <clears throat> talk to Gilbert uh, on the side and say, so uh, Gilbert, is this what you intended when you invited your family from Stormloft? It doesn't seem to give us much space to talk about what's happening. Positions on the side aren't really possible with Kirk Osler at the moment. So you go to the table, and there's Frac okay. and you, and then there's Fine. still a third cup. Uh huh. So I, I look at the third cup, and I'm still going to say what I'm going to say, and I'm not going to drink that. Okay. Nope. Live a little, Andy. Fine, I'll drink it. Fat boy. Peer pressure here. Fine. Well, now that I have the amulet of health, I feel like I might be able to take it. Give it a go. Get a one. Get a one. what? What? Bolette is please. not within ten feet, by the way. Uh, so do I? I roll a save. Constitution saving throw. Yeah. Ooh, oh, we're doing good, guys. You Eighteen. Kind of, you kind of have an uh, initial kind of, huh, and then you kind of sip it down. Like the smell of it's kind of foul to you. Um, the best way to describe it is, um, 
Have you ever been to like the beach, but like not like a sandy beach, like a rocky beach with kind of like that algae kind of like briny smell? That's what it smells like to you initially. And then when you take it down, it's kind of got more of a cool, crisp, like ocean cold burn. Mm -hmm. Got a little like hint of the funk. Of... Mm. All right. Do you expect your, your relatives to leave soon? Um, I think we're trying to arrange a more permanent place for them in the city. So... They look like they're pretty settled, if you ask me. Well, that's not the long-term plan, so we'll see. I need to speak with my uncle. Mm -hmm. See you around? We gonna go talk to him tonight, brother? Uh, he should be showing up. He had some business to take care of, but he'll be showing up in a little bit. Business already? Hadn't you just said they just got here? Well, that's the Kurgosler way. Business and then play. <laughs> you, uh, you hear. Problem is, they never get to the play part. You hear the sounds of the right. front door being opened, um, and uh, lots of footfall kind of entering into the main uh, foyer. <laughs> Trying to get the cat's oh. attention. Don't don't pay attention to me. Keep talking. I'm listening. <laughs> All right. So. To answer your question, Ren, I think we're gonna have to put up with this for a little while, but you know, hopefully, we'll, it won't be too long. Because you know, we should probably talk about what just happened and what's gonna happen next. We probably don't have a whole lot of time to figure that. You're right. Um, maybe we could. Does anybody have the ability to create an extra dimensional space? Let me see I would, if I have something on my spell list. Oddly specific. <laughs> You got a specific, but idea it's also in mind? Secure. We gonna shove I... all the little blue people in a little pocket hole? Ooh, I'm okay with shoving little office. people in the pocket holes. Uh... Your office is a ways away, isn't it? Check. I thought it was. Yeah, it's in the other. Well, currently I don't. However, I do have a book that would have Leoman's tiny hut and I don't believe I have put a new spell into my book using the uh, code word thing that John mentioned <laughs> so I could add Leoman's tiny hut to my book and then I can I think I can make that silent okay um, as you're kind of, I mean, I assume this conversation is happening, Sam. You've kind of wandered into the dining room. Um, well, at, at one per point, there was some extra cursing when the kids got in my way, and then I moved out of there because kids. Yeah. Understand. All they do is get things sticky and ignore it when you tell them something important. <laughs> These cats are coming out in force, dude. They're turning the frogs gay. <laughs> the okay, mister. <laughs> God. The cats are turning the frogs gay? That's weird. Indeed. Also, yeah. Um, so then, um, I get the Alex Jones reference because he's the conspiracy guy. Got it. Um, but moving along, <laughs> the the sound of the people going through the, the foyer, um, it does sound like a lot of them are kind of entering into, uh, or moving towards the dining hall. Um, the uh, kitchen doors open up and people start coming out with hot food. Uh, and as you kind of see uh, people kind of entering into um, the room, the food is kind of set out pretty quickly as people are entering in. Um, not in a sitting and eating kind of style, but a buffet style, kind of close to the edges of the table. And then it kind of looks like the uh, chairs are kind of set up to have like a walking position near the table because the gnomes aren't quite tall. Um, um, and then, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to ask really quickly with all of the spell books that we ended up getting did any of them have rope trick in them i gave you all the list i think okay I, i'm gonna have to dig through those continue yeah um there in walks uh three gnomes of kind of um a bit more uh grandeur than you've seen uh one of them um and i think i've got him ready uh maybe we'll see um but one of them um is very old um uh, very uh you know uh, curmudgeonly kind of uh, balding 
um, long kind of hair, uh, you know, almost purplish colored skin. Uh, it, it seems to kind of aged uh, and wrinkled quite a bit. Uh, kind of looks over and goes, Ah! Ah! The Lord of the House finally decided to come around, huh? <laughs> Get over here. Hello, Uncle. It's good to see you. He uh, gives Gilbert a big hug. Alright, that you was did. great. You probably... You did good. You did real good. This is a nice property. And from what I understand of all of the legal discourse I've been having and discussing with uh, your friend Julian Crosswell, <laughs> uh, we have means to get out of this place and make our own home not too far from here. <laughs> shouldn't, excellent. Shouldn't be too that long. That was easy. Uh, maybe another two or three months and we'll have our own established land. Do I hear any noise, any squeaks from Ren when he says that? Yeah, is Ren just like, just, oh, God, no. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's totally understandable. You've made a long journey from Stormloft. I'm sure you just want to get a permanent home. And as you know, gnome hospitality, my place is your place. Oh, you get a chance to move out. Of course. At least spots on your trip out here. Of course. I'd expect nothing less. <laughs> hmm. What's for dinner? Kind of looks to the food that's been placed out and uh, kind of steps up onto the bridge of chairs that have been set alongside the table. Again, the table is pretty high set. And instead of everyone sitting at the chairs and trying to, you know, sit at these uh, these chairs, uh, because the house, uh, even though it did belong to a gnome, the dining room was set up for more, uh, yeah, less gnomely um, uh, guests. Um, so they kind of meander through um, and start picking out their food. Um, and then after a fashion, um, more people start to enter into the how or into the, the, the area and start to get their own meals, buffet style, exiting out and going to their own places where they eat. Can I do my best to try and get a head count? Yeah, make a perception check. I can help you. 23. Um, 72-ish? Breaks. After I finish counting 72, I'm going to whisper that to Ren. Do you know there was uh, 72 of them? And that's not counting the ones that are in the kitchen, or possibly in the basement. What about outside? No, the ones outside come in. You heard a dinner bell being oh, rang outside. Okay. Jesus Christ, man, 72. That, that's not counting the people who just made the food. That we're talking at least 80, <laughs> not 90. You possibly said, triple digits of little blue peoples. You said 23, right? Yeah. Uh, on the yeah. perception yeah. check? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you would have noticed that at least five different individuals came out of the kitchen refilling the food during the course of the half an hour or so of everyone gathering their food. The, uh... The, the the little guy got enough funds for this for three months. That's uh, them's a lot of mouths to feed, bud. You hear a voice, a familiar voice, uh, Gilbert, come out from behind you. We've made means, and you look over and you see that your attendant, your ambassador, is present. And he says, oh. "We've come into some um, funds." Fantastic! Does that mean the green guy gets paid too? <laughs> Eat up. You're welcome. Since I don't recognize you as an employee of House Kurgosler, I can't really state that's the case, but Lord Kurgosler, is this individual um, your employee? Uh, he's with me. He's with... Uh, he's. You should treat him as you would treat me or Ren or Valette. Oh. Uh, I don't pay different now? a bit. Those guys get paid? I don't pay them. No, no. So. They don't get paid, but they are friends. <laughs> They get the friends of the family discount. <laughs> so no, treat them as my my friends. Fair enough. He kind of uh, meanders off, just kind of, yeah. You don't do you, unless you stop him and ask him any questions that are pointed. No. Nope. No, I want to talk to Kel a little bit more though. Okay. I want to say, uh, so Kel, uh, I see the vanguard of our closest family has made it. When do you expect the rest to arrive, and where are they going to be staged? So. 
As you know, you were sent out here to find a place where we could stay. And you did, but you didn't. Because, obviously, not a lot of room here, but enough room. Enough room for us. And we were able to get out here because, um, well, we made some arrangements and uh, we were able to book a flight and get out here pretty quick. Um, which was great and nice. But um, the uh, situation as it stands, and um, something I thought you would be accounting for, is that um, if we were to move all of the Barbagazzi over uh, this way, we're definitely going all to... Right, it get the fuck out of my way i sam just marches out after seeing all this for a while <laughs> oh man he's coming on here everyone kind of like you're, you're just like tromping over like <laughs> moving past all of the names <laughs> oh, no the um kale kind of and then kind of looks back to you so it it it, it, it should be a couple more months before we're able to facilitate uh, what's happening with um, this negotiation. You see, you've been given quite a bit of land here, but um, uh, not so much in the way of what we're looking for. In the city is fine, but um, you have a decent sized property for properties in this, uh, in this city, but uh, the city is so, even for us, small, so compact and closed in and what we need is a bit of land of our own to craft a crate and make right. ours right i thought the king would be amenable to possibly some land outside the city that was set aside specifically for us and he kind of hinted to that well we were speaking with him we had a meeting with the king today but he didn't show it hmm interesting what what was the reason you just too busy no one was able to tell us why that's troubling. I don't wouldn't expect him to do that. He seemed very, uh, you know, friendly and open when we had discussed, you know, a lot of before. A lot of people suggested it might have something to do with the wedding of his son, but that's not for a few months. We'll be well out of the land by then if everything goes according to plan, <laughs> and off in our own. Um, perhaps, uh, uh, who knows where we'll be headed off to? <laughs> but hopefully somewhere. Not so stuffy. This place is just so... Don't you think? Well, when you bring the whole family here, it's maybe not an ideal location for a family reunion. I mean the but... whole city. Oh, the whole city, yeah, it has its disadvantages. But we were thinking outside the city, someplace... Yeah, no, for sure. Oh, nice. um, preliminary discussions, um, specifically from your uh, friend, um, re revolve around a, a small town uh, north of here um, called Corlock. Um, it's uh, just on the lake, um, uh, Lake Middleton, and um, yeah, perhaps there. Um, and uh, that's what we're thinking. If um, they suggest something else, we'll do our research into it, but Corlock sounds nice. Would I know anything about that? You can make a history check. Yeah, let's see, just to see if I came across anything like that before. Oh gosh, I'm not the most intelligent. 15 for the folks at home. Corlock's a town to the north. You believe that it is under the, um, uh, let's see, uh, it's under the jurisdiction of the uh, Duchy of Whitespring, um, which is one of the noble houses, it's led by one of the noble houses. Um, I, I'll get back to you on which one, um, but basically there are three duchies underneath, or possibly four, I'll double check, um, duchies that basically subsist beneath the kingdom um and uh yeah it's um to the north it's the northernmost of the uh the duchies all right so that sounds good until we find out more hmm. you think you might have passed through it on your way into um you know rossigar proper but yeah All right. Well, how are we guys? How are we gonna get a rest, guys? This place is kind of crawling with uh, gnomes. Oh, Sam already left. <laughs> Sam's already gone. Oh, oh damn we'll... gnomes! Yeah. Where'd right. Sam head off to? Uh, right now he wants to go shopping because they mentioned the extra dimensional space. Okay. You're muted. If I know where it is, like, yeah. see if I can find 
scroll of rope trick. Okay. Yeah, um, it's pretty late. Um, and uh, spells aren't really sold out on the open street. Um, as you're aware, uh, magic is illegal. Um, as I said, on the black market, wherever, like, you know. Okay. So, go the idealists are currently. Okay. Go ahead and just make me a good old fashioned charisma check. And we'll deal with you in a bit. Um, Ren, uh, Valette, Frack. Oh, that wasn't actually raising my hand by, by accident, but uh, Valette has been probably in a room with a mirror, uh, feeling out her face, okay. seeing how it works. Uh, Every so often, a gnome will kind of stop by and go, what are you doing? Oh, just putting my face on. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they leave. <laughs> So, uh, does it, uh, like, does it seem to kind of work the same way? It's just better, more yeah. seamless? This or... is this is stuff you'd all be aware of in character. Okay. Like, you're, you're not really discovering. It's more of a right. realizing. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, um, basically, um, skin-wise, it feels like flesh. Um, the auto, or the uh, uh, advanced disguise kit uh, basically allows you to kind of peel your face off and put new faces on. Um, so very similar to what you were doing, except that, you know, when you were putting like a new face on, it was over top of the undaunted face and it would uh -huh. reactuate where in yeah. this kind, it's the face is the portion that actuates and it's built inside. So, and that's so sweet. Oh, so cool. A bit more seamless right. than before. Uh, uh, yeah. So, and kind of after, uh, that was probably going on like at first and then the dinner bell is heard and here's a whole rush of people gathering downstairs and decides to go to the library and completely quiet look for look for religion books the only person present besides you is Broskar okay uh Vlet giving Brock some space uh just sort of for about five minutes or so uh starts looking for library books okay. um religion All just right. out of like peaked curiosity okay um so. i got a 12 on my charisma check unless someone wants to give me advantage in which case it would be a 22 okay um nobody right i don't have any advantage i i, I honestly wasn't counting on it happening okay so then um uh brack uh what are you doing I don't have a whole lot to do other than drink this fire water. Are you going to try and drink a lot of it, or are you just trying to drink a bit? Like, what's your dream goal here? Um, probably drinking a good amount of it. I imagine. Make another. Just went through a lot. Make another Constitution saving throw. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, brother. It's a nineteen. Pretty good, um, but the DC was a bit higher this time around. Um, you're definitely feeling a little bit more um, uh, inebriated, to be sure. Um, and uh, you also kind of feel this very strange kind of warmth at the bottom of your stomach. Um, if you've ever had the flu, um, try and kind of focus on how that feels uh, without the other side effects of being in a flu-like state. For the purposes of uh, moving forward um, throughout the evening, you are considered poisoned. Ooh. All right, Ren. Um, Ren wants to try to make some contacts with some of the associates to see what's happening. Is there any way I can get a letter to Effie? Okay. Um, yeah, you can write a letter and uh, send it out, but um, you'd want to wait until the morning time. Uh, most messengers don't act or uh, act during the evening time. Okay. Um, is there a way to get word to Val Mardigan as well? Um, that would be a drop, and so that would definitely need to be performed in a place that's Mardigan territory, and you're not in spell Okay. Off. Okay. Okay. Maybe um, I'll write those letters and have them ready. Where will you be uh, drafting those letters in the library? Okay. So Brox and... Uh, 
Follett and um, Renner in the library kind of occupying it. Brack, you're kind of just hanging out in the uh, dining room as they're basically pulling away all of the um, buffet-styled uh, containers that have been set out for um, uh, acquisition of food. And the dining room becomes the dining room becomes very quiet um, uh, after what sounds like all of the uh, cleanup work is completed. Uh, the individuals that exit out of the kitchen, uh, you count the five that you saw before, and three others. Uh, very portly looking um, uh, male gnomes uh, that come out and they look like they've kind of got the look of uh, possibly like cookly types. Excellent job. The food was delicious. Thank you. All right. Uh, <laughs> now, can, I think we're in some pretty bad shape. At least I know I am. Okay. I got the crap kind of kicked out of me. So I, I just need, I think I'll clean up and, you know, head to bed. Inspire for a rest. Okay. Somewhere. So you will find that your bedroom is occupied by others, um, but they do welcome you into your own bedroom. Kale is kind of taking residence in your bedroom, and so is kind of like the closer tiered family, um, like the higher um, grouping of family. Um, a total of about four other gnomes besides you and Kale. Um, but it's a pretty big room, so plenty of room. Looks like some of them have cots out, and two or three of them are sleeping on the main bed, but are kind of, there's enough room on the, the bed for uh, another. Um, yeah, everybody in the household would know that Kel snores like really loud. Yeah, absolutely. You can hear does. him basically anywhere in the house, but everybody, all the gnomes are used to it, because you know, it's just what he does. And he usually smells of old feet, and gnome farts. <laughs> he sleeps on a cot. He's not one of the ones on the bed. But we're used to it, you know? He's family. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought that's just how all gnomes there, smelled. Oh, nice. Wait to wait be. Wait to be. <sighs> tisk tisk. Um, anyway, um, let's deal with uh, the smart guy. Um, you're 12, um, you, you very quickly realize that trying to find any kind of contacts or leads in the portion of town that you're in is very difficult. You're not familiar with the idealists in this area, you know they're present, but you can't seem to find any connections, contacts, or leads, unless you can well, think of any off the top of your head. Yeah, I can. I have my uh, radio and I can just contact Winston. Okay. What do you say to him when you call in? Winston! Yeah. Oh, yep. The, the there's fucking gnomes everywhere. Just fucking gnomes everywhere. Oh. I can't stay there. Fucking no. They, there was there was kids well, all around me. They, I, the kid kids. They they had green elevens on their faces. Do you I, know what a green eleven is? I was wondering where you you've been, boss. Uh, I Do was... you know what a green eleven is, Winston? Answer the damn question. It's when they've got snot running down their nose, like onto their face. It's a green 11 going down their fucking face. They get diseases everywhere. Boss. They're going to kill us all. Boss, uh, uh, we've been seeing some problems up here in Spellmoth, boss. Uh, Just um, fucking boss. stupid kids. Boss, what, uh, what? Right, what, what? Yeah, um, where have you been? I was in a pyramid. It was a pyramid scheme. I don't know. You hear a voice in the background on Winston's side. Ask him when we can find him. And then Winston says, Um, where are you at, boss? I mean, right now I'm on... What is this? Edgeworth and... I can't even see what that sign says. Edgeworth and some other road. It's a crossroad. There's... There's... There's oh. a hat shop here. Okay. Um, well, uh, so, um, like I was saying, um, a lot of, a lot of stuff's been going down in Spellmoth. Is where you're at safe? I don't know. I mean, probably. Where, where are you? I'll just... What did he say? You hear in the background. He says he doesn't know. <laughs> fuck, fuck. You hear in the background. Uh, well, boss, I gotta go. Um, I'll talk to you later. And you hear the phone click off. Damn it, I forgot to ask him where the market was. Make a perception check. 
It's wisdom, of course. Or intelligence. Wis uh, make a perception intelligence check. Perception intelligence? All right, this is will... not going well for us. It's going great for me. I don't know what you're talking about. This will say religion, but it's per perception. Okay. That's a 15. Your half orc uh, companion, um, whose name is escaping me at the moment, um, that hung with you and the crew. Um, it sounds like it's the sniper. Yar. That's right. So Winston and Yar were talking. Well, Winston, Winston, Winston was talking. Yar was in the background. He, he was basically asking, uh, ask him where he's at, ask him if it's safe. And then when you said, you don't know, he said, fuck, fuck. And then Winston closed the phone conversation. All right. Where's the tavern around here? Or somewhere that I'll have rooms. As you're kind of wandering about, um, you look over, um, just looking around, and you see a very familiar looking Sayer Yujin in very, very, very fine coat, uh, fur kind of lining around the uh, exterior, kind of standing there with his hands in his pockets just looking at you. Doesn't seem to, you know, draw any attention or try to draw your attention. He's just staring at you. Uh, is that Val Mardigan? No, no, no. Or uh, this, Sarah Eugen. This would be the individual who uh, you first met. Uh, the one who was asking around about you at the uh, Red Dragon. The one who killed Wilbur. The one who brought you to the room with the glass wall. Uh, the contact. Gotcha, that guy. Doesn't seem to be trying to draw your attention. Is standing a good distance away, but is very noticeable um, out on the street as there's a few people passing by, a couple of uh, lemon caps, but mostly uh, the streets are pretty limited in people um, as it's getting later and the sun is definitely less visible on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, you know, that that's understandable. It wasn't necessarily unexpected. Um, give me one second. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm going to keep walking to try to find a bar and or, again, like a tavern or something where I could stay the night. Okay. A wild rock scar has appeared. Hello, <laughs> friend. So just just so you know, Joe, catching you up. Um, you were just hanging out in the library at Kirk Osler's house, just kind of keeping, you know, to your old studies, picking back up where you left off. And transition. There's a shit ton of gnomes. Like yeah. around a hundred or so. If uh, Brock is to be believed, there's about 78 uh, to uh, 80 that he's counted. Wow. <laughs> they Not don't... a very good place to do some research. Well, no, the library is actually cleared out. Before then, you kind of walked in there were kind of giving people grumpy looks because there's a lot of kids in the library, and they kind of just stayed away from your corner. It's really good for gnome kicking, Brocks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they don't Sounds die. Good. They multiply. Barbara That's Gezi. insane. You guys rabbit? <laughs> Barbagezi's kids. Uh, it's several generations of uh, Barb or of Kurgosler. This is just House Kurgosler. This isn't even the four houses of the entire principality, which are expected to arrive as well. So. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. The trouble with Trinidad's Don't worry, Barbara. Joe. They'll only Barbara. be here for two to three months. If things go well. Yeah, no problem. It's great having family back. Sounds like the perfect time to go on a quest out of the city, right, guys? <laughs> Gilbert, your new uh, nickname is like The Doormat. The Doormat. Hey, it's family. And uh, Sam went off on a shopping trip, um, like a goofball, and uh, is being looked at by um, our friend... Um, a person of the Kengo. So back to Sam. Um, are you going to do anything? Or are you going to get back home? What are you doing? As I said, looking for a tavern. Keeping an eye on the guy. Seeing if he's following me. 
in the Noble Quarter, the only place that you can kind of remember uh, there being a uh, tap room is that really fancy place that I forget the name of. That really fancy place that you forget the name of. The place that you got mad that... about because the prices were um, pretty high. Yeah. I'm guessing I'm not going to have enough money for that place either since I have, like, less than 15 gold. They had wine back at the house. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm more interested in seeing if this guy's following me and trying to set something up to catch him a little bit out of the way. It's what my thought was. Okay, he doesn't follow you. Uh, he stays pretty much where he's at, and as you kind of move away from him, you see him kind of look to you and then kind of look away and then turn into a different direction. Um, just seems to kind of get lost in the distance. Um, if you actively try to perceive him and see where he goes, make a wisdom perception check. Yeah, this will go well. Perception. That'll be a two. Like a, just like a shadow, um, lost in a city filled with shadows. He dissipates, just whoosh, gone. Not, you don't even know, you, you might as well have been magic. He could have teleported for all you know. Okay, uh, as a, another quick question. Hmm. Gilbert's house, besides like the basement, is there like a shed or something outside that the, might not be gnome infested? There was a guest house, um, but it's been taken over. Um, basically, the only place where you know that doesn't have gnomes is the dining room um, and the uh, basement. And the basement has the guards, the, uh, the hired uh, soldiers. Um, that are staffing that, that house. Right, fine. I'm going back to Gilbert's. Okay. You're welcome. I'm to... going into the basement. Okay. Down there, you can Go ahead. Come help me take over the library. We can barricade it off. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Fine. Make a last stand against those goddamn I go gnomes. And, I go and barricade the, the library by literally just barricading it with a spell. <laughs> Okay, so as you recall, to the north of the library is the, like, um, kind of lounge area, kind of like a family room um, off the side of the foyer. That seems to be a pretty decent kind of place for uh, where the gnomes are kind of uh, focused. The foyer is completely empty at this hour. The dining room is completely empty, as is the kitchen. There is a study that's got a couple of gnomes in there, um, and uh, the upstairs is forget about it taken um but yeah um in the library completely quiet you guys get there um and there are a couple of lounging chairs which you know have proven pretty comfortable in the past um and it's pretty quiet uh, even though there does seem to be some activity in the uh the um uh, the hall the the chamber to the north of you um it, it doesn't seem like the uh, sound is um coming to you Yeah. Right. Uh... Damn little blue kids. Got my stuff everywhere. Got papers missing. I'm missing <laughs> books. Uh, I, I'm just. Go I can ritual cast Lehman's tiny hut in the library to keep them out. <laughs> <laughs> Which I will do. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, Ren, where are you kind of uh, nesting up? Library. Okay. And still petting your pa uh, your notes, your letters to be sent out. Yep, yep, yep. Lord Kurgosler's with his family upstairs in the uh, master bedroom. Um, Valette? It's still in the library. Okay. Yeah, well, the room you went to go look in a mirror probably wouldn't have been that room. There isn't one. Um, you probably would have gone somewhere else. Um, and Oh! R sorry. Well, you, yes. That's right. You came back down. You came back down. Then you went to the library. Got it. That's right. I remember. I remember. Sorry. That's my fault. Um, so, yeah. So, you're all in the library except for... Uh, Gilbert, Brock, I think. Who's still, in the, who's still in the dining room. Um, just drinking. Right. Yep. Uh, also, nice I, would, I would just mention calmly and casually after I got done casting the, uh, the magic hut to my friends. So, uh... Remember our friend Stabby McStab Stab, the Sarah Eugen Stabby guy? One of the Kengo? Right, the Stabby guy. 
So anyway, he was sort of, you know, like keeping an eye on me while I was out there venting my frustration over all these fucking little gnomes. Little bastards. Oh. Right. So yeah. The horse. Right. You know, that thing that I suggested we get and then no one listened to me. Well, I mean, at the time, there seemed to be more important things pressing us, but... Right. The fact that there's, like, a homicidal maniac in charge of a bunch of other homicidal maniacs that want to possibly kill us if we don't succeed, that's not important. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty. How should we address the problem now? Well, we did give it a go. I mean, we went down to the docks and that crazy guy shot at Killed Andy's... or killed Ren's... Yeah, my car got shot up! Before you crashed it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean... It was a good effort. Again, I'm, I'm just thinking more about the fact that, you know, we didn't complete a contract, and now it's not just him, it's going to be Mardigan, too, who's going to be upset with us, and, you know... Again, I... another slightly psychopathic person in charge of other psychopathic people that are very fond of stabbing things. Why is Mardigan upset with us? Was it Mardigan the one that gave us the contract, or was it... Who was it that we went to that sent us to the Kangoo? The Kangoo were the night sharks. We were supposed to do a favor for them, but the night sharks and the Kango had a falling out. Right. Sorry, the night sharks then. I they think might... at this point, the night sharks would be happy if we killed all the Kango off, but I don't think we could. Can the little blue gremlins hear us inside this bubble? No. no oh. really... Well, they could, but they're no, no one's really paying attention to the room. Like, everyone's away from it. You guys are tightly, kind of neatly in the... Uh... All right. well, just in case any of them get curious, keep your voices down. Oh, and I'm not sure if I ever mentioned this, but it happened to come back to me that... Did I ever all make you aware that I happened to send a letter to the Grand Mage here a while back? About... Well uh, what? 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 No. what? What? Well, this was uh, before I realized that the conglomerate probably as a whole just need to be taken out. Uh, but I kind of let him know that we were planning on overthrowing the conglomerate here and about our possible plans of uniting the gangs. And I don't know how long it's going to take for it to get to him, uh, but... I don't have a way of intercepting it at this point. You did that without telling us. Uh, Gilbert was following me. What does that mean? <laughs> well, what does that I, mean? He happened to be following me when I went to go send the letter. So did he see the letter that you wrote? Oh, no. Did you tell him that you wrote the letter? Uh, at the time, uh, we weren't at that area. Let level of trust yet so that so that means no you did this all on your own yeah this was this was a while ago uh, uh -huh, maybe uh -huh. insert however many sessions like 20 sessions ago was <laughs> you're so lucky and Lauren's dead <laughs> as far as this game is concerned <laughs> You're all still knocking on the door. That was quite a bit of heads up. Surely they would have expected us to, you know, find the temple at some point, right? So we did. the defenses didn't seem to be too like bulked up or anything like that. They didn't seem to be prepared if you gave them a heads up. Well, th this is the Grand Major complaining about Major Kurgosler. So I don't think they've gotten word or at least if they have by now they haven't arrived yet uh but i i thought while we're listing our problems we have to deal with i might as well make us all aware of one that i just remembered hey i'd say that's a that's a problem yeah, i'd say so yeah uh yeah i'm sorry uh... <laughs> <laughs> At the time, it seemed like a good idea. You need a real drink. I believe so. So, 
since we're in an opaque block and and no one can see me and yeah. i sincerely doubt that this is going to kill him <laughs> <laughs> He just kind of snaps his fingers and points at you with three fingers, just like, <laughs> and, uh, and three blue and bolts, just boom, boom, boom. Wait, do I do I have a reaction? No. Like I I, I can't re react by activating the the auto shield. Um. Make a. Shield oh, is on, reaction, it's isn't only it? Only nine damage. Oh no, the shield's deactivated. It was used today. You haven't rested since oh, oh, it's once per day, not short rest? Yeah, it's once per day. Right. Oh, okay, never mind then. <laughs> so what is your reaction to getting hit by three magic missiles? He had an ability. Auto shield can block magic missiles. No, I know, but without that, like, what's it? <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> suppose I had that coming. <laughs> <sighs> so the magic missiles, you, you blare them into the left. She kind of tumbles back a bit. Um, and then kind of, you know, crowns what, uh, she says there, and, um, yeah. Calm down. We're so fucked. <laughs> we have at least three things wanting to kill us right now, and that's actually, no, four, because conglomerate here and conglomerate somewhere else are probably going to want to kill us. Oh, dear gosh. <sighs> and, you're, and you're not forgetting about the demon we unleashed, correct? So, if no you think if I just, it, like, really kill some of the gnomes, uh, oh, anyone oh. will miss them? Uh, That's not no. a bad thing. Uh, also, um, uh, to be fair, Sam did see the thing leave. Oh, that's right, that's right. Because I, I cast the invisibility when I heard the footsteps. Two of you know that that thing exists, yeah. Did either of you make it known to the rest of us? No! <laughs> so now would be a good time to let you know that uh, apparently a demon got unleashed when we took down the pyramid. Proxgar <laughs> is having... Bloody hell! Some <laughs> shit like that, and I just kick all the papers and the books and everything off. <laughs> I'll be outside! Goddamn fuck! Sorry. Okay. If you storm outside, uh, are you going out... You want to come to the dining room? Are you going out the front door, or are you going to the dining room, or are you going to... I if yeah yeah if i would spot wreck out of the corner of my eye that was that's the good idea right there I'm you, gonna join i would him. like to say you hear sam shouting from the dome bring me a drink <laughs> <laughs> what do we know who the demon was was it doran belcart that i don't know Follette. i think sam was the one that knew who it was, I think Valette just saw because of her well, divine sense. Well, Ren just asked the group, and Sam is aware of who the demon prince that was unleashed Was it Doran Valkart? Sam. You know, the one that the Adams brothers, who like lived downstairs, worshipped? Yeah, you know, the, the creepy angel guy with the bloody wings and all that. Yeah, it kind of looked like him. Oh, awesome. So I think we have our work cut out for us. Right, so let's take the easiest thing first and just get shit-faced out of our minds. Brack is sitting there with uh, the, 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 the bottle, uh, which is actually about uh, three-fourths of the way gone yeah, uh, at this it's... point. Um, and uh, Brock, you kind of walk over to him, and he looks fucking good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, by that I mean, like... Every other word is brother. Brother, brother. What's up, my little bearded brother? Come <laughs> sit down here at this table and join me. <laughs> we gotta have games around here somewhere. I bet I can carve a piece of dice. <laughs> Come here, brother. You gotta play oh, wow. catch up. You've been sitting there with your fucking books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought I was doing something important. It's it's I don't know if it's gonna matter. A drink sounds Sounds loved. It's the most important thing right now at this hour, and I pour him a big fucking glass. Hell yeah. Catch up, bud. Oh, yeah, I will down it as quickly as possible without taking a break. And uh, you got enough in there for another one. one We're going to need it, bro. <laughs> hey, don't. I, I think they bottle. got. 
I think they got plenty more down in the basement. It's all on the blue note. I'll find it. You take this in there. Sounds like y'all uh, need it. <laughs> the two of you are pretty perceptive. You don't hear any sound, but you very immediately realize that someone enters into the room with you. When you both kind of look in that direction, you see a drow elf female kind of walking towards the kitchen. And remember, drow elves are not like drow elves in uh, generic D&D. They're not, uh, they're, they're not evil by birth and all of that crap. They're yeah. Right. Wasn't she one of the guards? Yeah, she's one of the guards. Right. Is currently or was? Is, is, she, uh, is, is, yeah. But she just walks past you guys into the kitchen. I'm just sighing. Let out a big sigh. We, we know her? Uh, yeah, she guards the place. Then I bet she knows where the booze is. She and I'm going to follow her. She and... comes back out before you even get up from your chair. She has three bottles in her hands. Um, and kind of sets the fire water bottle out in front of you guys, sets a bottle of wine in front of herself, and then sets a very large um, uh, bottle of something. Uh, the markings on it um, appear to be in Elvish, um, and uh, she takes that one for kind of, uh, like, she's got the wine first, and she pours herself a glass of wine. She says, where's the fellow in the funny coat? Fellow in the funny coat? Brandy. Yeah. That was our other friend uh, back at the place. Uh, he didn't. He didn't make it out. So, what about the uh, the green haired fellow? I haven't seen him around. Which Where the hair? fuck is that drink? Uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> Never mind. She says as she holds the glass up to uh, dead interesting people, I guess. Indeed. Didn't catch your uh, name, lady brother. I didn't give it. <laughs> and she says, "Lady brother." <laughs> she says, as she kind of looks at you. I don't know. If we're, I'd, uh, I don't know I'd if we're there. Obliged to share if you'd like. I don't know if we're we're that far into the the relationship yet. <laughs> it's fair. You can come talk to me after a few more drinks. Be happy to share. I don't think we're gonna make it that far. <laughs> What's on your mind, lad? Um, I'm off my shift, and I need to drink a bit before I go down to try and meditate in a room of snoring old soldiers. Ren chuckles when she when hears that. Oh, you're, you're a ways away. You're over in the oh, library, crap. so do you come around to hang out with the cool drinking kids, or are you staying? Oh, right? oh yeah. I, would, I want to know what she's drinking. Well, like, you don't, what, you don't even know the she's there. The you don't even know she's okay, there. Okay, fine. I'm going to wander in. I have okay. this sense. All right, elf sense. <laughs> <laughs> Meta medicines. Medicines. Yeah. Sure enough, they are uh, sitting and drinking with uh, the drama. Um, if you remember her name, then you remember her name, but she hasn't given it again. Hold on. Fair enough. The uh, elvish bottle you recognize um, as kind of an elvish beer, um, which isn't very common, um, and uh, it's not particularly common in Rastakar either. But um, it's okay. It's definitely not strong or potent. It has very summery kind of tastes to it. I would have that. Come join us for it. You never know when when your opportunity to drink might be your last. It might be the last. That's right. With our luck. I'm gonna have to play some uh, some some fast catch up there, skinny brother. <laughs> I don't know if I could ever catch up with you doesn't hurt to try we were just having a, a drink in Ian Lauren's name mm, to Ian Lauren here so um, are you staying here long or are you planning on leaving <laughs> she says kind of focusing her attention on Broxgar at this point. Well, we're definitely not going to go hang out with a bunch of snoring old geezers. That doesn't sound like... You're not wrong. I, I uh, suppose we'll be spending the night. After that, who fucking knows? Fair enough. There's really not much to do at this uh, hour on this portion of the sixth day, so... <sighs> this is better than nothing, I guess. She says that she... Uh, finishes the glass of wine and pours herself another glass. 
Anybody got cards or dice? We could play a game. <laughs> I think old Ben does, but I he's probably asleep at this hour. Means his pockets are unguarded, right? <laughs> I'll be right back. She says she drinks the whole glass of wine quickly, sets it back down, and wanders off. I like um, that one. Well, we should just, keep that one. Yeah, she's, she's something else. She's pretty handy. Uh, well, I got, well, it's just us gentlemen in here. Uh, Ren, do we have any means of contacting the gentleman society? Uh, I don't. I don't think that Ren has any contacts with him, John. Right? The only contacts you would have is contacting the Mardigans and seeing if you have a form of connection. Like. Right, Wait. and so that's what I was trying to do with Val. I was trying to sort of get an update on the situation with the other gangs. Yeah. Go ahead. Just as we we're in there. Sorry. Go ahead. Tim. No, this is just for. Didn't they put some kind of device either on Valette or one of us to basically see everything we saw? It was like a spider. Yeah, you have an, an eye on you. Like, literally an eye on you. Broxgar, you're the only one with a uh, perception high enough to notice this, but as you guys are talking, you do see a bottle kind of float past with a cup, and they just kind of wander off. Looks like they're heading towards the library. Oh, <laughs> Alrighty, then. <laughs> I'll grab a bottle of my own. And shall we follow the, the, the floating drink? I thought we were playing games. There's a, there should be. Go, go tell the drink to come back and play games with us. It'll be fun. <laughs> Floating drink holding cards. <laughs> just the, the hand of cards up in the air. And then it's like, <laughs> the card is dropped. How would you know if they're cheating? <laughs> they could be if, looking over. How are they going to tell you what they're doing? Like, I call. <laughs> It's just a floating hand. Uh, you know, a simple knock or two. Anyway. Um... Actually, that gives me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that that gave you an idea. <laughs> so, a weasel just wanders into the room and sits on the table. Why don't you just get up and go? Oh, because if you do, the spell goes away. Because the spell dismisses if I go if I move out of there. But I can sit and watch through my weasel's eye, and if they give the weasels cards, mm -hmm. I can play poker with them. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll fucking uh, deal the weasel in. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, you're, you're able to watch them. Um, they, they, they appear to be waiting for somebody talking amongst themselves. Um, you hear somebody kind of moving pretty loudly through the, uh, the great hall. Um, and then you hear the door open and then kind of shut kind of loudly. And then you hear, oh, fuck, from outside. <laughs> Does that sound like Winston? No. It sounded like someone in the house exiting the house. And then that same person saying, oh, fuck. Because the door kind of got slammed a little louder than you presume they wanted to, to slam. And uh, eventually um, she comes back and uh, she tosses a deck of cards and kind of like a leather bound uh, container out onto the table. Um, and she says, he was awake. He's got thirds. <sighs> I think he just walked out just a moment ago. Came up before I did. She uh, shrugs. So, um, what are you in for? What do you want to play? Dealer's choice. <laughs> Three dragon ante it is, I guess. <laughs> and she uh, pulls out the cards and very just you know dexterously bridges, shuffles. She's like, the weasel just sits on the table. <laughs> the weasel pops up onto the table. The, yeah, the weasel sits on the table and just, like, if she starts shuffling cards, the weasel will tap in front of it. But like, at, it card. at this point, you're, you're, just, you're just kind of staring at Sam, because you two are the only two in the library, and he's got his, like, eyes rolled in the back of his head as he's warning Oh, yeah, I'd like to say, weasel. I'm sitting in the most comfy chair I can while I just have my eyes glazed over. Sure. John. Yeah. Is there any kind of marking utensil in this room? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> mustache. 
You could Sharpie. you could easily procure one. Yeah, there was definitely writing materials that were present for um, uh, the writing and drafting of those letters that Ren wrote. Okay, Blet will uh, find one and draw things on Sam's face. I'll have you to know, think of it. I can still feel things when you do that, and if you continue to touch me, you're not going to like what happens to you tomorrow. He says <laughs> as his eyes are still rolled into his head. <laughs> The weasel I'm in the other room what I, what was really the first annoyed. Thing I did. By the way, you guys are you guys are looking, and the weasel's kind of sitting up on the table, and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first was like a little curly mustache was the only thing I got to do, and then like half of a curly mustache. Okay. Y yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just back away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, if you guys are playing uh, with her in the game, um, if you have um, uh, proficiency um, with. Uh, like, think it's playing cards. I don't know how it's marked. Uh, let me double check. Uh, bear with me here. Let's see if the compendium will let me have the soul. La, da, 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 da. Hmm. Dice said. Playing card set is the name of it. Okay, yeah. If you have proficiency in playing card set, um, or uh, yeah, if you have proficiency in playing card set, then you would have um, proficiency for this roll. Otherwise, you're making a charisma roll. Three Dragon Anti is a game that I'm not going to try and describe to you, um, but. The, you understand the rules of it as your characters because it's really common, um, but it's a, a game that requires like you know, bluffing and kind of engaging the other individual as to them thinking you have something in your hand. That Where you would it not. say whether you have proficiency? You would have it's a tool or a type of um, uh, tool, so it'd be a proficiency in playing card set. For instance, Valette is proficient in Dragon's Chess. Right, Dragon's Chess is another type of game. Yeah. Or dice, I think. It's dice, that. bone dice is sometimes listed as that, or just uh, dice set. Yeah. Is that a background feature or a class feature? It's uh, it, usually it's a background, it's, but you could have a class feature. I got a natural twenty on that. All right. Yep. For a total of twenty-two. Okay. So the question I'm going to ask before we continue moving through this point is: the game just a game for fun, or were you guys actually putting money down on the game? I thought it, I I was gonna make it a drinking game oh, okay. if they proposed like putting money is like loser of the hand fucking does a shot of fucking fire water. All right, we can all sip on like He's wine or beer or whatever, but I like mean, we're gonna get okay, drunk. Sam's the one that's drinking. Also, I thought that it was for money, but Sam doesn't really care one way or the other. He just I I have no money, so okay. unless I borrow Fair money point. from the house, like so it's impossible, Matt, for the weasel to play the game because the game does require dialogue. Uh, I can. Hold on a second. Let me take you. You cannot take talk a through a weasel. <laughs> I don't know. I'm seeing if I have any other spells that might work, or if I can just shout from the. I'm just shouting from the library. I can see things. You just hear down the hall. You're having a hard time sleeping, Kevin. Uh, Gilbert is because there's just a lot of noise coming from downstairs. <laughs> no, I would imagine. And so are the 70 other gnomes that are gonna come down and bang on that fucking dome to get you to shut the fuck up. No, I can't hear anything because Kel Kurgosler snores like a freight train. So and he I'm just, just shoved his like pillowcases into his ears. <laughs> yeah, I'm just out. Okay. All right, all right. Just hoping I don't get woken up by a gang busting in and killing my guests. People will enter the library. Oh, actually, you know what? No, I have a better idea than that. Okay. If, if I need to, I can cast uh, Major Image and talk through Major Image. <laughs> so you've got concentration on the Major Image, and then you are using your um, action to enter into the familiar to be able to see. And the weasel's effectively playing, but the Major Image yep. is you talking. How long yep. does major image last? It only lasts for ten minutes, but still, ten right. minutes of me talking. Okay, so that first hand you happen to win, um, Joe. You... I, I still haven't done it yet. I I, okay. I do get playing cards, so I'm going to do that. Okay. I do have proficiency. Other, other yeah. proficiencies. 
how know, does that work? How do I choose whether it's it's decks, it's, right? Just do, just do a charisma with proficiency. Charisma with uh, cards, yeah. Charisma with cards. How do you do? Well, with charisma, 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 with, charisma with proficiency. Yeah, you should have it set just up. Just click charisma, and we can add three with our heads. Like we're not that dumb, mm. Andy. Okay, I, I, okay. well, I, I'm pretty <laughs> dumb when it comes. To... I'm an English. Uh, it should be in the bottom left. Twenty-two. Oh no, there you go. You got nineteen. I got it. Yeah, no, that's not Okay, so Great. the ultimate loser of the game is in fact Broxgar, who is forced to drink. Um, go ahead and make a Constitution saving throw. Um, as a result. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you, uh, the major image, which is basically just Sam standing there, but, like, translucent and kind of see-through, is kind of telling you that, ha, 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 and then playing the game over the top of this weasel who's holding the cards with his little weasel hands. I, I, uh, this, so the weasel does not have a drink in front of him, though. The weasel does have a drink in front of it. Okay, then I... Also, I, Sam has a drink in front of him. I drink my drink, and I drink the damn weasel's drink, too, and I stare at him. You bastard! All right, so you're drinking two drinks at once. Okay, uh, you, you you drink the first one. You're like, ah, oh, yeah. drink the second. One. Oh, ah. But you're like you gonna catch up in your head. Like you're definitely putting forth the face. Ah ha ha ha! But in the back of your head, you're like, that was a really bad move, bro. You probably shouldn't try and jump into it that quick. <laughs> and you guys kind of like sit there and continue playing for a while. Uh, at least 10 minutes, um, and uh, over the course of it, um, it does seem that uh, Broxgar is kind of the one that ends up kind of losing the most. It seems he has an understanding of how the game works, but he is very obvious and very easy to read. Um, his honesty is kind of like jarring at moments in the course of the game, and you're kind of looking at him like confused. Every so often, you guys are playing, uh, you see that uh, uh, Ren kind of like cunningly outsmarts uh, Sam, which makes you go, oh, yeah, well, keep an eye on that one. Um, and uh, the drow is terrible at the game, but she's kind of not as bad as Brock's, and that's her shining kind of like <laughs> moment. She does lose one under Brock's, but very quickly Brock's guard gets to Brock's level in drinking the remainder of the bottle. Fair enough. Um, the lot of you drink and have some fun for the rest of the evening and ultimately come to a point where you're tired. It's been a long day. In fact, you started the day off uh, inside of a strange pyramid, uh, fighting against the conglomerate, destroying the faces of Valette, and uh, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> Ren, where will you go ahead and perform your trancing? Oh, shit. How about in the library, if that's okay. yeah, any I mean, place to do I still have... I still have to hut up and I'll be up for like a long rest. Okay. Okay. And I'll assume at least one more casting of major image was probably thrown out if you're a available to do it. Um, yeah, I can burn my fourth level spell slot to cast another major image. Yep. Yeah. And so you would have played for about twenty or so minutes and then dropped out, and then uh, Ren would have easily become kind of a forefront leader in the games, um, and everyone kind of got bored and then started heading to bed. Broxgar, are you sleeping in the dining room or are you moving to the library? Library. All right, and then uh, Valette, you're down moding in um, the library. Uh, the library has that offshoot hallway, right? Oh uh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'll stay inside the hut. And I ain't gonna get. Me. Everybody goes to sleep, right? Um, I imagine it was the drow staying in the dining. Where's the drow going? You actually get to a point, because you were already drunk at the start of the gambling, that you don't remember much of what happens past that point. You remember winning some and losing more, because your charisma oh, yeah. is about on par. Like, well, you're above Brock's card, but you're definitely the lowest of the grouping. Um, plus two. Oh, you're the same, same as Sam. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you did okay. But you definitely didn't need any more alcohol in your system. Oh well, yeah, I was drunk. Yeah, so Not you, fair. You, you kind of remember a bit of it, but most of it is kind of out, and when we get to the point where you wake up, you'll be waking up on the dining room table. That's what I was going to propose. <laughs> okay. She, so good. I'm glad she, we're on the same. She d is not there when you wake up, um, and she wasn't there for at least half of the game, if, if you recall correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, everybody goes to sleep. Uh, when you wake up in the morning... Um, so, uh, Brock and Broxgar, you're a bit hungover, 
Um, so you'll have one level of exhaustion for the earlier portion of the day. Um, Kurgosler, you slept like a dream. Uh, you replenish not only all of your hit points, but all of your hit dice as well. Because you got a well rest. You, you were well rested. Uh, Ren, um, you drank a bit, but you slept pretty well. So you get a regular full rest, regular long rest. So half your hit dice plus your normal uh, allotments there. Uh, Bilette's full, well rested. You didn't do any drinking. Not really possible for you. And Sam, you did a bit of uh, drinking. So just a regular long rest, not well rested for you. I can't, I can't the girl drink. And and I get the she roll didn't. for my wand of lightning. She just yeah, didn't. said it's impossible. It's impossible for her to have been drunk last night because she didn't drink. I just wanted to remind you, she's a real girl now. Well, she's not. <laughs> she's still an undaunted. She still does not have to eat or drink. She just has the ability to do so. She's like a weird. Uh, Damn it, missed opportunity. Like, girl, there's always tonight. See if she can get drunk. <laughs> let's, oh, yeah. let's test this. Um, but yeah, um, okay. And, uh, that said, it's morning time. Uh, the sun comes up, um, and it's definitely, um, a, a nice, bright, sunshiny day. Um, but it's, uh, kind of misty out, um, uh, in the morning time. But it's that kind of cool mist where it's, like, just, you know, like, slightly foggy, but still sunshiny bright, um, that you'll get, um, on coastal cities. Uh, that said, um, what's the plan of action for today? So, we have a lot of things to tackle. I need a new shield. Which is probably the least of our concerns right now, but it helped. Um, should we visit the Mardigans? Perhaps? Not see the worst idea. Stand idea. with them. See how things are with the Kenga. If there's any way to make amends. and uh... We also need to, at some point, make contact with the Society of Gentlemen. And uh, I was thinking about going and speaking with the King's Vizier at some point as well. Since mm. we've been recanting our list of enemies that we've made, it'd be good to you know check up on all our possible... That's a very sound decision, Brox. I believe we should make sure we do that. Yeah, and I think starting with the Mardigans is a good idea. Well, what the hell was in that bottle last night? That ain't natural. If it was just good old ale. I'd be fine right now. I'm not feeling... Yeah. Um, it, it, very early on, too, the uh, gnomes are up and out of... Uh, uh, adamant, kind of just getting stuff done, um, cleaning stuff up, cleaning the dining room. Um, <laughs> around me. Around you. You are laying out on the table, sprawled. Um, 100%. Eventually, you do feel some kind of nudging on you, and when you kind of wake up, they've kind of pushed you off to one side of the table and have set up the buffet line next to you. Um, and gnomes start kind of coming in and getting their breakfast food. <laughs> This is uh, fucking perfect, little brothers. And I just like reach hands one of them, and like one of, one of them, lying on my stomach, just like one of them oh, before God. before you get your hand up to grab the food, slaps your hand and then says, "Hey!" and then points at the food in front of you. There's like a plate just filled with food. We already set you up. Don't grab <laughs> the food. Don't dirty it up. First, face first. Just like I don't even have the energy to use my arms. <laughs> just like, yeah. Classic face roll. Like just... an old ass, skinny, tiny, like half orc on top of the table. Like That's face first. In a super familiar. Ass. You can feel the bacon. Like you can feel the That's bacon beautiful. entering your face. Like... That grease all over my face is what I need to get this hangover shit over with. And then as just, soon as that plate is clean, I'm going to, like, roll off the table onto the ground and finish sleeping there until someone else comes in here. I'm just sitting there rubbing the bridge of my nose. So, Why wow, are there so many damn blue creatures everywhere? It's just a, <laughs> it, it, it is a throng, um, but very quickly after the lunch rush, or the, the breakfast rush, why did I say lunch rush? The breakfast rush, the house becomes very quiet again. So much so that there's nobody even there. Like, it, it feels like there's hardly anyone there. And Lord Kurgosler, you and Kale, 
um, kind of get dressed in the room, and he kind of looks at you and says, "What's your plan for the day? You coming with me to the? Uh, you coming with me to uh, the uh, the Capitol building, or are you uh, hanging out with your friends?" Well, if it's important, it's important. I'm not trying to belittle that. I mean, if if whatever you were doing during those three days was an important matter, don't get me wrong. I do not mind doing the bureaucratic matters. It's perfectly fine. If you have other things that you're interested in doing, boy, do it. You've done so much already. I mean, look where we are. Gilbert! Gilbert, come on. We're going to try to convince someone not to kill us today. Hurry up, you dumbass. <laughs> Just over a six day ago, we were being torn from our lands by King Eversol. And we were being stripped of everything that we had. It was very close. We very narrowly escaped that. We didn't have anywhere to go. We might have been end up we went and end up in the wilds, and I would have never got your message. So you've done good, boy. You've done great. If whatever you're doing with these lads is important, then do it. Just know that I'm gonna be at the Capitol dealing with a lot of bullshit. <laughs> well, Uncle. I really appreciate all that you're doing, and you know it was my pleasure to be able to help you guys out. And You've done I, great. I do, have to, I do have to attend to a few things. Uh, you know, if you notice any shady characters around the house, please, uh, you know, keep a lookout for the relatives. Uh, I'll set, set oh. some. You mean not the some guards? Okay. Well, um, with the money that we'll be clearing from the sale of that uh, warehouse. Um, we should, ba, ba, ba. we should be able to afford more uh, uh, guards if uh, you feel that's necessary. Well, actually, Gilbert, come on! We've got to explain why the warehouse is sold. Yeah. Why don't you hang on to that plan of selling the warehouse? Oh, uh, I gotta it, the bill's already out. going through. It, it's it's um, we should be collecting the money by the end of the sixth day on the day of Dan. All right, it's our what's but done has been done. We have a lot of crap we have to already clean up. We we have um, a lot of gangs in this area are kind of after us. So night gangs, shade, night sharks. Uh, we've got kind idealists. Of... We've got a bunch of people after us. But who? Here. Yeah, you don't have the fell hoods after you, do you? What'd you say? The fell hoods. They're not after you. Are they out here? Are there fell hoods around the end? No, the fell hoods are not after us. Good. Good. Just other. These guys are like street gangs. No, nothing for you to worry about. Just kind of make sure if you see any crazy people around here, don't you know, talk with them. Let them know I'm not around, and, and I can get back. Was that them. strange fellow, the Seiryujin? Was he one of those gang people? Oh yeah, he was probably a Kengo. Never <laughs> heard. Another gang. Never we heard of that. We're gonna deal with these guys. That's what we need to do. So I give him the deed to the warehouse since he's already selling it. But he doesn't need you to give it to him because you didn't have it on your person. You left it in your house, and that's why he was able to sell it. Oh, even better. <laughs> that's not really my fault. It's certainly <laughs> not. Already selling. No. Oh! All right. Well, it's I feel it's a bit not your that. fault. That's a perfectly valid explanation to these people. <laughs> He's my relative. It's not my fault. They're uh, I'm, I, I'm talking about the gangs. The gangs, the gangs will understand yeah. that. Yeah, the gangs won't understand that. They're going to cut my head off, but oh well. My family's fine. That's what's important. Uh, I'd like to say, cutting your head off would be the nice thing for them to do. Right. <laughs> so, anyways, alright. I'm going to take off then. He's going to take care of the bureaucratic bullshit. I'm going to try to take care of our issues, which we have lots of. So, I will go down and meet up with the rest of you guys. Oh, how'd you sleep? I slept great. Isn't, isn't that great, you know? Seeing family and everything. Yeah. I fucking hate you your guys. family. I fucking hate your family. Um, Lord Kurgosler and the lot kind of gather up, and as they're kind of readying themselves, the entourage that entered uh, at the end of the day, that uh, they're preparing to leave, they're kind of gathering in the hall. You hear a loud um, kind of opening of the door, um, and a guard kind of steps in. One of the gate guards uh, kind of walks in and says, uh, I, looks to Kale, and then looks to uh, Gilbert. And it doesn't seem like he is actually, he was asleep during the whole process of Gilbert arriving and being here. And he looks at you two and he goes, oh. And then he looks to Gilbert and he says, uh, my lord. <laughs> and kind of shrugs and says, um, it, it would seem that you have a guest um, at this early hour. 
Hmm, who would it be? Uh, it is um, Rassicant Keela. Do I know who that is? Roll an intelligence check, and if anybody knows before he finishes that statement, you can tell me and gain inspiration. It's the elf from the king's... Correct. Gain inspiration. I, Ra- only got a I have it already. You can give it to another player. Have inspiration, Andy. All right, buddy, thanks. Shit. Sorry, Zach. Hey, Sorry, Andy yeah. always, is always handing his inspirations out. You know? Best. I keep dying with inspiration, so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, dying with inspiration has only happened twice in this campaign. <laughs> So what you're saying is you want to give it away because that's a death mark. Right? <laughs> John's got marks on fucking Brox and Ren right now. Fair enough. Andy, man. I don't, I don't, you can keep ah. your fucking inspiration. I don't need it. Bra- <laughs> yeah, my friends in You got a better chance of surviving without that shit. Bra- <laughs> man. Brassicant will eventually enter into uh, the, the hall. And if you do not recall what he looked like, he's a very tall, thin, kind of just rail thin elf. Um, very massive ears, graying hair, which is not a common sight, and wrinkles that belay like an age that has to be insanely immense. Um, as elves typically uh, live 600 or so years and have been known to live even longer than that, um, uh, depending on who they are um, and their luck and uh, health and such. But uh, he enters in. Uh, looks like he is fully adorned in the same regalia he wore when you had the very official meeting. Um, with him, um, dragon, uh, red dragon's head kind of bound on his shoulder as his pauldron, uh, wrapping around him. If you've ever seen the movie Coming to America, um, like they had the the lions and such, it's very similar, except that it's a dragon. Um, and he's wearing uh, kind of like blue robes that just kind of flare out with elvish uh, markings kind of scrawled all throughout, um, kind of looking to you um, as he enters in, uh, Gilbert. And he says, you've been gone for... 